Uh, so we're finally, uh, after a lot of work on learning about probability generating functions and studying them, we're finally ready to actually put them to some good use when it relates to branching processes. That's what we're going to do in this video. Um, this is an approach that is influenced by um, some notes uh, from kind of a different class. So we, it's linked below in the description as well as the other videos kind of in this series. Um, we're going to use a couple of key facts today. So one fact or in this video, one fact is this fact, which we proved in the most in the previous video, the PGF of x sub t, which is the branching process, the, the branching process x at, at time t, is equal to uh, basically the PGF of the PGF of the PGF um, of x sub zero, which is the offspring distribution. X sub zero is like you know, the, each cell has its offspring distribution. And x sub zero is that is the PGF and the PGF the PGF. Uh, x uh, t times uh, and eventually evaluated that. So that's the, the fact we proved in the previous video, and we're going to use two more facts that we're going to prove now. They're a bit easier. Uh, the first fact is p sub e, which we're going to call the extinction probability. So finally, we're addressing that question of you know trying to find the extinction, extinction probability of a, of a branching process. This video is focused on solving for p sub e. So the first fact is we want to show that p sub e equals the limit as n goes to infinity of the PGF of x sub n, right? So the PGF of x at time n, you know, going up to infinity, uh, we want to show that uh, evaluate zero. We want to show that prob uh, the extinction probability equals that. And that's actually a one-line definition. Um, for example, recall that if you plug in uh, zero to a PGF, so going up to infinity, x sub n zero, this is the same as getting the probability that the random variable equals zero. So we can just plug in limit infinity probability x sub n equals zero. Um, so again, this is a property of the PGF. Plug in zero, you get the probability that the random variable equals zero. So we just get the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability of x n equals zero. Basically, the limit in the end that this thing goes to zero, which is the extinction probability. So uh, that is all set. We proved that fact. We can use that in a second. Second fact is a little bit trickier. Uh, PGF at um, x sub n minus n plus 1 evaluated 0 is the same as the PGF of x sub 0, PGF of the offspring, offspring distribution. I'm just going to write that again. Um, So each, each cell has the same offspring distribution, each cell has the same P, PGF. PGF, uh, the offspring distribution, evaluated that the PGF of X of N evaluated at zero. Um, this is a little bit trickier to, eh, not trickier, we're actually gonna use this fact to prove this. So, you know, we can write the PGF of X sub uh, uh, N plus one as uh, PGF of X zero, X zero. And we have n plus one terms, right? But we just take the middle n terms, right? The middle n terms are the PGF of x sub n, right? I'm just gonna write it. right because we have the basically the product of all these individual x sub zeros. Um, and n of those x sub zeros, the products of those are the PGF of x sub n. So we kind of have this fact. So that is the chain. Awesome. So we're going to use those two facts, and I'm just going to erase this because it kind of looks ugly. We're going to use this to prove this fact, but just so I have space, I'm going to um, erase this. And now we are going to kick off our proof, our chain of equality, uh, to kind of find uh, the extinction probability p sub e. Notes. So we're going to start uh, with fact one, where we're saying p sub e equals the limit as n goes to infinity of PGF of x sub n. And this is this is fact one, so you know that's that's kind of what we proved. Um, and then we're going to, for our first step, we're going to say same thing, but x sub n plus one. Okay, so all we changed is we made this n plus one instead of n, and those are the same because n is going to infinity, so it doesn't matter if it's infinity plus one or if it's n plus one or n, 
both are going to infinity, so those, those should be the same. Um, now we're going to use our second fact, right? We have x sub n plus 1. We're going to use our second fact and plug in for x sub n plus 1. We know that this equals x sub n plus 1 evaluated at 0. So uh, we now have the, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Limit. And this is just using that kind of fact above. And what's cool is that this is a uh, continuous, that this PGF of the offspring distribution, we assume it's a continuous function. If it's not, we're going to have issues. So we get to just take this outside the limit and flip those. So zero um, limit. Awesome. And then door jam thing. Um, and now, uh, what is this term? Well, using fact one, this term is just P sub E. Awesome. That's pretty cool. So we, uh, we you know, it, it doesn't seem like much, but we solve for P sub E using a couple facts. We see that P sub E is equal to the PGF of the offering uh, distribution evaluated at P sub E. And, you know, I, we have P sub E on both sides, but it's the only unknown in the situation, so we can use this to actually solve for the, prob the extinction probability. This is why we've done this whole, you know, exploration of PGF, probability generating functions, because we need the cool properties of the PGF and to actually solve this answer, and it actually, you know, it appears in our answer. So just because I think it's really important to actually do a concrete example when you do something abstract like this. We're going to discuss a quick uh, example now. There's also a couple examples in the chapter, which we're going to link here that you, you know, you should always work through immediately after kind of learning something abstract like this. So one example is actually a, a branching process we discussed in an earlier video, and we were like, do we think this will go extinct or not? You know, we did some intuition. Now we can actually show, we can actually find the probability. So let's say the offspring distribution x0, x sub 0, is p1, oh, sorry, it's p0, p1, p1 half, p2 equals 1 fourth. Um, so this is saying, you know, the cell dies, it doesn't reproduce the probability 1 fourth, stays just, to, you know, creates one more cell, dies, so, you know, one cell, probably 1 half, and splits into probably 1 fourth. Um, that's x sub 0. Um, the PGF uh, we can define as just, um, remember, it's going to be, I don't have it written here, but the sum, it's basically the sum x equals 0 of px equals x, which is the s sub x. We only have three terms here, so we can easily write out the sum. Um, so, you know, first is probably the x equals 0, which is 1 fourth, times s to the 0, which is just 1, so the first term is 1 fourth. Second term is the probability that x equals 1, which is 1 half, times s to the 1, which is s. And the third term is probability that x equals 2, which is 1 fourth, times s squared. So this is just kind of the expansion of that term, right? Um, and now, right, this is our PGF. And now we can use our result here to say PGF evaluated p sub e equals p sub e. So one fourth plus one half p sub e. We're just plugging in p sub e for x s plus one fourth p sub e squared equals p sub e. Awesome. So that's our that's our uh, you know our equation. We could move things over to one side. Use the quadratic equation to solve it. You know, this isn't a class on, on um, algebra, so we're just going to tell you what the answer is. We get p sub e equals 1. We actually get the two solutions are, are both 1, I, I think. So we get p sub e equals 1. Um, you can kind of see that 1 fourth plus 1 half plus 1 fourth equals 1. If you plug in 1, so it kind of works. Um, and it, it, uh, also important thing, this is discussed in the chapter. We're not going to uh, prove it here. But if you get two solutions that are different, P sub e is always the smaller solution, and there's a proof of that in the um, in in the chapter linked here. Um, but anyways, we've shown that probability of extinction is one, right? This will certainly go extinct. We 
calculate the PGF, we set P sub E equal to the PGF, evaluated the P sub E, P sub E evaluated to the P, P sub E set equal to the PGF, evaluated P sub E, came out to P sub E equals one, probability extinction is one. We talked about this earlier, right? Like we were, you know, we're like, oh, well, let's go see. Now we can show for certain, solve for PGF, solve for the probability of extinction, and it is certainly one. So a lot of videos to get to this point. Hopefully, you know, you've kind of enjoyed this process, and now you have a very cool tool for solving the probability of extinction of any uh, branching process. And we have a couple more videos on branching processes talking about some other kind of metrics and other kind of cool things, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it thus far. We'll see you next time.